With the Galaxy S7 and the iPhone 7, Samsung and Apple have shared the smartphone limelight of 2016. Now it's Google's turn. The Nexus is dead, long live the Pixel. This is your complete guide to the last big smartphone release of the year. Covering the Google Pixel, Android 7 and beyond, this video featuring over 100 tips is split into 5 timestamp sections to help you jump to the tips and tricks you want to know the most about. As always, don't forget to give the video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the Video Gadgets channel for more massive guides just like this, and share the content with like-minded tech enthusiasts. Right then, let's get this show started. I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal, and this is the ultimate guide to the Google Pixel. The Google Pixel comes with a fingerprint sensor on the back of the device, which you can simply rest your finger on to unlock it. If you didn't turn this on when you first switched on your Google Pixel, in order to do this you can go to Settings, scroll down to Security, and then tap on Pixel Imprint, which will allow you to modify your current fingerprints, but also add more, which you may want to do, so that you can unlock the device with your right finger and your left finger. You can double tap the multitasking button at any time to go to your last known application. If you want to enable multitasking and split your screen into two, you can press and hold on the multitasking button. At the top will be the application you are using, and then you can select a second application from your multitasking list on the bottom portion of the screen. You can then increase and decrease the size of the two screens by using the slider in the middle. You can press the home button to escape multitasking, but it is still working in the background and you can enable it again by pressing the multitasking button and to turn it off, press and hold the multitasking button, which will return you to one application. And while we're on the subject of multitasking, if you're finding your recent applications is starting to overwhelm you, you can swipe all the way to the top and then tap the clear all button to make a fresh start. If you enable the Google Assistant on your device, you can launch it by tapping and holding the Home button. To find out what it can do, simply tap on the microphone button and ask... What can you do? Here are some things to try. You can say things like, did the Red Sox win? Or, tell me sports news. Swipe to see more options. So, give it a try and find out what it can do. You can unlock your device by simply saying the words, OK Google. In order to turn this option on, you will need to go to the Google Now Cards, then go to the Settings, scroll down to Voice, tap on OK Google Detection and turn it on. And when you do turn it on, you'll have to say OK Google three times in order for it to recognise your voice. You can check notifications on your device by swiping down on the finger sensor when the screen is unlocked. But it must be noted that this needs to be enabled before you can use it. To do this, go to Settings, then scroll down to Moves, and on here you want to enable Swipe for Notifications. The controls for taking a screenshot remain the same by pressing and holding the Power and Volume Down button. When you do that, you can check in your notifications and see a tiny thumbnail, but if you tap on now on the notification, that will turn it into a bigger profile picture, and then you can either share or delete it with the controls in the notification tray. If you press and hold the power button, a restart option has now been added to power off. When you press the share button in applications, you'll find your list of ever-expanding applications that you can share things with. If you want to put something at the top of this list, you can long press on it, and that will give you the option to pin it to the top of the share options. One of the very useful and very unique options you have with the Google Pixel and stock Android is the ability to add new users other than the main administrator that you have on a device. To do this, go to settings and then go down to users and from here you can add another user who could have their own Google account and use it as a normal phone or a guest which has much more limited options. So play about with these options and see if you need to add new users to maybe use for your entire family. The settings screen has undergone a bit of a revamp and you may have noticed that many of the settings have disappeared from the main screen. They're still here, but you just need to dig deeper into the settings to find them. When you jump into a setting, you can also jump to more settings by using the button in the top left hand corner to move to other areas of the settings screen. Also, it should be noted that there is a new option for Google support. If you swipe to the left, you can either chat to Google through phone or chat. 
so give it a try if you really are struggling with the settings. When you're in settings, a brief summary of each area is displayed on screen. So remember when you wanted to go to storage and it took ages to tell you how much storage is left? Well, it now displays that on screen before even going into it. You also get a rundown of battery, current volume ringtone, and whether adaptive brightness is on your display. When you first activate your Google Pixel and go to the settings screen, you'll get various settings suggestions at the top, such as adding another email account or changing wallpaper. To remove these suggestions on an individual basis, you can tap on the three dots to the right to remove them, or you can collapse and expand the entire section by tapping on suggestions at the top. And if it is collapsed, you will see how many suggestions are presently available. You can increase the font size on your entire device by going to settings, scrolling down to display and then choosing font size. There's a slider here so you can put it as small as you want or much larger and I personally prefer larger text on my screen and as you can see it makes an immediate impact on how your fonts are displayed on your screen. As well as increasing and decreasing the font size on the fly, you can also do that with your display, such as shapes and icons. To do this, go to settings, then display, scroll down to display size, and then you can make it smaller or larger. For example, if you go to the largest size, that's going to make things look fairly big on your screen and also notes on your home screen, but it's going to minimize the number of icons you can have on screen. So play around and see what your preference is. If you're running low on battery, the Google Pixel does include a battery saving option, which can be accessed from the battery screen in settings and at the very top is a battery saver. If you turn it on manually, you'll see that the top and bottom of your screen turn red to indicate that battery saver mode is on. And when you have it on, you will see a reduced performance. It might not check emails as quickly and syncing may be slightly delayed. You can turn it on automatically when your battery either gets down to five or 15%, just to eke out an extra bit of juice when you're absolutely desperate. And if you don't want to go all the way into your battery settings to turn on battery saving mode, you can do it from the quick settings notifications by tapping on the battery button and toggling on battery saver. As well as battery saver, the Google Pixel also has data saver. So if you're short on cellular data, you can go to settings, data usage, and then data saver and toggle this option on or off. This obviously will affect how your data is brought into your device and that will include certain things like syncing not being as accurate as usual and other data considerations will be taken into consideration and used less frequently. You can also turn this option on and off if you add it to your quick settings by tapping the button where it says data saver. If you're ever struggling for space on your Google Pixel, you can go to settings and tap on storage and at the very top here, we have a manage storage option. At the very top of this screen, we have smart storage, which you can turn on, whereby when you're getting short on storage, it will automatically try and send your photos and videos to Google's cloud storage. Alternatively, you can use the manual free up space now option where you can go individually through photos, downloads and applications that you've used recently and delete what you don't want. And one final thing to note from the storage screen, there is a file browser kind of hidden away and it's at the very bottom of the screen and if you tap on explore this will take you into a very basic file browser for your Google Pixel. Nothing too complicated, you can change the views, you can sort by different methods and if you select a file you can do a couple of things such as deleting it and sharing it. And many devices now offer an option called night mode where it eliminates the blue spectrum of light towards the end of a day to help your eyes rest and prepare you for sleep. The Google Pixel has this option as well. To get to it, go to settings, display and night light. You can turn it on and you'll notice that your screen does to change a red hue of color, but you can also turn it on automatically, schedule it, for example, for sunset to sunrise or towards the end of the day. The Google Pixel does come with a pulse notification light that sits in the top speaker grill, but it's not turned on by default. To enable the feature, you will need to go into settings, scroll down to notifications, tap on the cog in notifications, and then toggle on pulse notification light. When you're on the lock screen, if you swipe down on the clock, that expands your notifications. If you swipe down on the actual notifications, that will show you the individual content of them. And if you swipe down from the top of the screen, that takes you to your quick settings. 
When you swipe down from the top of the screen once, you get your notifications. If you swipe down again, you get all of your quick settings. But if you want to jump straight to quick settings, you can swipe down with two fingers and that gets you there straight away. When you have a collection of notifications all from the same application, you can swipe down on them to look each at notification individually. In addition to this, for some applications you can delve even deeper into the notification by swiping down on each individual notification, for example to get the full email. Also note that some notifications have inline actions such as Gmail where you can archive it or reply to it directly without having to open the application. At the same time you can expand and collapse a full collection of notifications by tapping on the top here. And if you want to adjust the notification settings, rather than swiping you can just flick the notification to get a cog, tap on the cog and then you've got the options to change how many notifications are shown on your device. When you are downloading a file, a small notification will appear in the top left hand corner of your device. It's also in the notifications and interestingly, if you wanted to cancel the download from the notifications, you can simply tap cancel. Many of the notification quick settings have double functions. For example, with Bluetooth, if it's off and I tap on the Bluetooth option, it will turn it on and give me quick pairing options. However, if I long press on Bluetooth, that will take me directly to the Bluetooth screen where I can manage more devices. When you swipe down to see your notifications, you will see six quick settings at the top of the screen. If you swipe down again, this will launch all of the settings available to you on screen, but you can edit them by tapping the pencil button in the top of the screen here. This enables you to bring in other settings if you wish to by long pressing them and dragging them into the area. The top six represent the settings that appear on your settings screen notifications as the first six quick settings. It should also be noted that if you add more settings that can fit on screen in your notification setting area, you can swipe left and right to see all the settings you have added. This is ambient display, whereby the screen turns on to let you know you have a notification without you having to touch the device. In order to turn this setting on, you need to go to settings, then display and simply toggle on ambient display. If you want to put a custom message on your lock screen, you can do this by going to settings, then scrolling down to security and tapping on the blue cog next to screen lock. And here you will have an option that says lock screen message, which you can tap on and then type in your own personal message. When you start to adjust the volume, you'll see the master volume at the top, but you can press on the arrow next to the volume to get up other volume options, such as media and alarms. You can tap on the symbol itself to mute it automatically. And it should also be noted that if you go to settings, then sound, and then other sounds, you can toggle off certain other sound options, such as power on sounds, charging sounds, and lock screen sounds. Enjoying this guide so far? Then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you want more content just like this then subscribe to my channel because I gave the Samsung Galaxy S7 exactly the same treatment with over 100 tips. If you want to jump to that guide click on the link on screen now otherwise let's get back to the pixel. The fastest way to access the camera very quickly is to double tap on the power button. You can also do this from the lock screen so you don't even have to unlock your device in order to access the camera. You can also create dedicated shortcuts to different camera modes by long pressing on the camera icon. This will give you the option to take a video or take a selfie, so you can long press on one of those options and create an icon from it. When you're in the camera application, if you flip the phone twice with your wrist, it switches to selfie mode. If you flip it twice again, that goes back to the normal rear facing camera. In order to enable this mode, you need to go to settings and moves and enable flip camera. You can also turn on jump to camera for the double tap of the power button to quickly go into your camera application. To switch between camera and video mode you can swipe left and right and notice how much of a frame is cropped when you switch between the two modes. Along the top of the screen you have different settings for whatever mode you're in such as timer, HDR mode, whether to turn on a grid and white balance. If you tap on these settings in the left hand corner you can switch camera mode such as panorama, slow motion, photosphere and lens blur. 
It's also important to get the right aspect ratio on your pictures. For example, this is 4x3, it's a more square image. You can change it by going to the settings and choosing the back camera photo resolution. If, for example, I choose 16x9, that will give me a wide angle shot, but it will also crop the frame. So you need to change the resolution depending on what framing and quality you want in your pictures. If you tap on a subject on the screen, it will refocus to that subject. So you can switch between stuff in the foreground and stuff in the background. At the same time, you'll also see an exposure meter on the right appear and you can use that to change the exposure level to either brighter or darker, depending on what shot you want to take. If you long press on one subject for long enough on your screen, that will set the camera to AFAE lock, which means that that subject is now always in focus no matter what I do with the camera. To turn this feature off, just tap anywhere on screen. High dynamic range or HDR mode works to balance the shadows and highlights of a photo so that neither are being favoured or ignored. And this is done by combining three different exposures into a single shot and it can really give your photo some punch. To turn it on, you can tap on the HDR logo at the top. It's set on by default and usually this tended to slow the processing of your pictures down because it had to stitch three pictures together. But the Google Pixel camera is so good that it's recommended to leave this on whenever you're taking pictures. You can take a picture on your Google Pixel by pressing on the volume rocker, although you can change that function if you want to by going to settings, then volume key action and choosing either shutter, zoom or just setting it back to volume. Obviously when you tap on the shutter button just once it takes one picture, but if you want to take a series of pictures, in other words burst mode, you can press and hold the shutter button. Even more, if you want to create a little animation out of a burst mode, you can do this. So after taking 14 photos we can look at the photo gallery and it has created a mini animation and you can see that as indicated by the word animation on your photo. And when you finish taking pictures in the photo gallery you can use pinch to zoom to increase and decrease the size of your photo thumbnails. When you long press on the phone icon you'll see favourite contacts and you can pick one of them up and change it into a favourite shortcut on your home screen. If you need to block a number you can do this by going to the phone application, tapping on settings in the top right hand corner, going to settings and then tapping on call blocking and simply add the number that you want to block. If you want to set up emergency information on your device which people can see without having to unlock it, go to settings, then users and tap on emergency information and from here you can include such information as address, blood type, any known allergies, medications and more information. You can also set up emergency contacts in this area as well on the second column and once completed if you try and unlock your screen you have the option here which says emergency tap there then tap on the information twice at the top and this will give you all your emergency information as well as contacts. If you're familiar with Android you may be wondering where the app draw button has gone. All you need to do now is swipe up from the bottom of the screen on your home screen to get the app draw. You should also note that there is an alphabetical list on the right hand side which enables you to quickly jump through the letters of the alphabet for your applications. The static Google search bar has now been replaced with a Google button but if you tap on it it will open up a search bar. Alternatively you can swipe to the right to launch your Google Now cards. The weather information on your home screen also acts as an application. Simply tap on it to get a brief rundown of the weather in your area. If you swipe up, you can also get a forecast and continue to swipe up to get even more weather information. You can now press and hold on Google applications to get more options. For example, if I long press on settings, it gives me the option to look at battery, data usage and Wi-Fi. If I long press on one of these, it turns into an icon which I can place on my home screen, so I now have an immediate shortcut to my battery screen. If you wanted to, you could continue to do this to grab all the shortcuts from one application, put them in a folder and then you have effectively a shortcuts to all your settings. You can add even more settings at shortcuts to your home screen by long pressing on your home screen, choosing widgets, scrolling all the way down to the bottom where you have settings, pick up the icon, drop it on your home screen and that will automatically pop up a screen which shows you many different settings shortcuts that you can have, for example data usage. It will immediately pop that on screen and you can tap on it to take you straight to the data usage screen. 
A couple of Pixel Launcher home screen settings can be accessed by long pressing on your home screen, tapping on settings, and here you will have three options, one of which is to show the Google app. For example, if I turn it off, you'll notice that the Google button no longer has a border around it, and I can't swipe to the right to get to my Google Now cards. Many widgets that you put on your home screen are resizable, for example the analog clock. If you long press on it to pick it up and then drop it exactly where it was, a white border should appear around it and then you can drag it to expand the widget or shrink it to a smaller size. If you want to change the theme of your keyboard you can go to settings, scrolling down to language and input, then selecting the virtual keyboard tapping on Google Keyboard and finally themes which will allow you to change the colour of your keyboard like this. And while we're on keyboard themes you should also know that keyboard sounds for typing are found in preferences under sounds on key press rather than the general sound settings. If you download more than one home launcher and you want to switch between the two that setting has now been buried a little bit in the settings you have to go to settings then apps tap on the cog in the top right hand corner and then there is an option for home app and you can choose your home launcher from here now before we move on to the final section of this guide there's just enough time to let you know that if you're a fan of the iPhone and iOS then the video gadgets journal has you covered there too 100 plus tips on the iPhone 7 waiting to be watched if you click on the link on screen now if you're a fan of Android though no problem let's move on to the cool hidden features when you're in multitasking mode you can actually copy text from one application to another so here I have highlighted some text I can long press on it to pick it up then drag it up to the top application which is a web browser and drop it in my web browser search engine the magnification gesture if you want to use it on your device to get to it go to settings scroll down to accessibility then choose a magnification gesture and make sure it's toggled on once it is you can triple tap on the screen and hold it and then scroll around to zoom in and out if you want to enable it more thoroughly you can triple tap to execute it then pinch to zoom to increase the magnification and then triple tap to turn it off if you're interested in knowing what your Google Pixel is doing all the time you can set up a notification log and to do this you need to go to widget scroll down to the bottom choose the setting shortcut and one of the options here is notification log once you set it up and tap on it it will give you a breakdown of many of the things your Google Pixel is doing it's not notifications as such but it does give you a lot of notification information however it's of a more technical side so if you want to do that put it on your home screen and see what it's all about an old favorite of this one but always worth doing to open up developer mode on your device scroll to the bottom of settings go to about phone then scroll to the bottom of this screen where you see build number when you start to tap on it you will see that you are a couple of steps away from being a developer if you keep tapping you will unlock the developer mode which is now available on the previous screen at the bottom here so developer options gives you lots of different things that you can do but obviously you turn these on and mess about with them at your own risk if you do want to explore the developer options here are some of the things you can do the first one that I like is to show taps so that when you tap on the screen it actually shows you what you're tapping on screen which is quite handy next up we have a change at smallest width DPI setting and this can make it so that you can make the screen even smaller and fit even more onto the screen if you want to again you play with this at your own risk but at the very bottom of developer options you can force activities to be resizable which forces any application to be used in multitasking as through default not all applications are multitasking enabled and once you have developer mode enabled you can access system UI tuner to do this go to settings notifications and then long press on the settings cog at the top you will feel it start to spin and then vibrate and when it does this should automatically throw you to the settings and congratulate you on opening up system UI tuner which is now at the bottom of the screen now with the system UI tuner you can do various things one of the most important things available to you is the status bar changes you can tap on here and toggle off different statuses when you have them on for example if you turn on the headset and then plug in a microphone it will appear as a notification on your status bar and another thing you can do is take full control of your notifications by going to other 
power notification controls and toggling it on. Here you get a breakdown of exactly what you can do with each level of notification. In order to set these levels, you can go to a notification, long press on it, then tap on the automatic button, which then opens up a slider so you can move it to different levels of importance. Again, you fiddle about with these settings at your own risk. If you're a fan of cats, then the Android Secret game in version 7 might be of interest to you. In order to start it, you need to go to settings, scroll down to the bottom and type on about phone, then tap on the Android version number a couple of times. That will bring up the N logo for Android. Long press on it and you should see a cat appear at the bottom of the screen very briefly, like so. Once you've done that, go to your notifications, then tap on the pencil edit button and you should see a Android Easter egg, which is a cat, and you can drag it into your settings screen. Once it's in your Android settings, you will see it as an empty dish. Tap on it and then you can offer the cat some food. So let's try fish and see what happens. And two hours later, I've received a notification that a cat is here to eat the fish that I left for them. Cat number 68. So the idea of the game is that you leave food on your dish in your notifications and then cats appear to eat them. And there we have it folks, more than 100 tips on the Google Pixel. Now obviously no guy can cover every single aspect of a smartphone, so if you think I've missed something important, share it with me and the watching audience in the comments below. Otherwise enjoy the rest of your tech day, bye for now.